What does it mean to each one of us? Depending on your circumstances, it may mean a lot or it may be something completely abstract in the moment. But I want to share with you a brief story that happened Christmas Eve in December. That's when Christmas Eve is. That was a little joke. Christmas Eve, December, 1945 in Germany. In one boxcar full of American soldiers. It was called a 48 because in World War I, the Germans would put 48 soldiers on one of these boxcars, or they were called the 48 or 8 by 8 because they could put eight mules there. So either eight mules or 48 troops could fit on this boxcar. And the Americans had 48 soldiers loaded in this boxcar going through Germany Christmas Eve, 1945. Now, if you've ever been in a boxcar that's unheated with no lights in the middle of the night in Germany in the middle of winter, you know that is the last place you want to be because it's below freezing, it's completely dark, you can't see your hand in front of your face, it's just a little slice of hell on earth. And that's where our soldiers were, going through Germany in the middle of the night. To make matters worse, there were a few straw pallets in one corner of this boxcar, and so a few troops at a time would try to lay down and get some sleep. But as the train would lurch, every time it would come to a stop in one of the little towns, Soldiers would be falling all over each other and landing on top of the guys trying to lay down on those straw mats, trying to get some sleep. So it was literally impossible to get any rest. So they're standing in this boxcar. There's no seats. In the dark, freezing cold for hour after hour after hour. They came up with a plan, though, because every time they came to a little town, the train stopped momentarily. People got on and off in the other cars. So the soldiers said, okay, let's take some of, our t- some of our provisions. And they had their K rations, and some of them had you know, cookies that somebody sent from home you know, three weeks ago that were still in basically one piece. So they, they co- took a little collection, and in one bag, they put together whatever little rations they had that they thought they could trade for some candles. They were tired of being in the pitch black darkness of this boxcar. So they got together you know, a couple cookies, a couple chocolate bars, you know, some you know, 10-year-old spam from a key ration, and they put all this together, and they put it in the bag, and they like, okay, the next town, the next town. And the, they were all looking forward to even a single candle of light in this boxcar. They weren't, wor- you know, thinking this is going to warm them up. I mean, how warm can one candle flame make a boxcar in the middle of winter, right? But a little light, just one little light was all they were hoping for. Do you have a hope for this Christmas? Is there anything you're looking forward to? Now, I, I remember Christmases when I was a little boy. I, I always looked forward to Christmas. You know, I get to open one present Christmas Eve and all the rest of them Christmas morning. And I loved it, right? I'm a basic materialistic kid. So presents are awesome. A- am I the only one like that? So looking forward to lots of presents was always cool when I was a little boy. I can't imagine being stuck in a boxcar Christmas Eve in Germany, World War II, with nothing. So the the train did make it to the next little town. And they open the door. And they're looking for anybody that they can get the attention of. And all they saw was like a small eight-year-old boy, like a hundred yards down. And they were yelling to him with, you know, the horrible little bit of German they knew. There was one guy in the car that spoke German. And so he started yelling, and the boy responded to him because he recognized, oh, he's actually speaking German. So this little German eight-year-old boy came up to these Americans in the boxcar, and he's a little bit afraid. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He doesn't know why they're calling him. So he tentatively comes, and he explains, the soldier explains, look, we want to trade this food, and he holds the food out in his bag. And the little boy's eyes get bigger than you can believe because he was starving. This was not a good time to be a little boy in Germany. They were starving because of the war. So the the American troop explained, look, I'll give you all this food. Everything in this bag is yours. If you'll trade us for some candles, can you get us one candle, two candles? How many candles can you get us for this bag of food? And the little boy's eyes got bigger, and he said, yes, in German, which I have no idea what that is. And he went running away. Now, the troops at this point don't know what to think. I mean, the little boy's eyes got big, but what does that mean? 
And so they're praying at this point, Lord, please let this little boy come back with a candle or two, something. Let him come back before the train leaves again. And they're praying as the seconds go by. Can you imagine praying for a single candle? When you've been in the darkness for a while, one small light can give you hope. And the truth of the matter is, from time to time, each of us enter into that kind of darkness, whether it means entering a hospital or suffering some tragedy or some pain enters our life. And in the midst of that darkness, we, we need that light. Jesus is that light. Well, the train lurched. You know how locomotives will start pulling and all the cars start rattling? And so their car rattled and they go, okay, we're leaving again. Where's the little boy? And they're looking both ways. They, know, they have no idea where the little boy went or where he's coming, if he's coming back. And they do see him. And he's running as fast as he can go. He's just hopping over across train tracks, and he's running back as fast as he can with a small bag. And he runs to the car. As the train is starting to leave, slowly leaving the train station, he runs up to their open door, and he hands up that little bag he's got, and they give him the bag of food, and the little boy is just as excited. I mean, it's like you just gave him the biggest train set in the world for a little boy, right? The best gift in the world. Something to eat on Christmas Eve. And the soldiers opened up their bag, and you know what they saw? Six homemade candles in little paper cups, like a small cupcake cup. But there were six of them. And so they lit one, hoping it might last for an hour. They didn't know. And as soon as they lit that little candle one soldier started singing a Christmas carol. And they all started singing. And then they sang another one. And then somebody started praying. And then somebody quoted verses of the Christmas story from the Bible. And they actually had, with their K-rations, a communion service with that one candle. It was a holy moment for all of these troops frozen in the middle of the night, traveling through Germany. God entered their darkness. One of the men on that boxcar wrote this story just a few years ago. And he shared what they all 48 men went through. And how Christ, the light of the world, entered their world. And now you and I have heard that story. We've shared a little bit of what they went through. Although we turned the heat on here, I didn't want you to freeze tonight. And we have lots of lights, don't we? And each of us have had plenty to eat. God has richly blessed us. But the truth of the matter is, none of our stuff matters apart from Jesus being the light of our world. Without Christ, none of us have hope. Without Christ, none of us have the true light of life itself. Apart from Christ, we are empty. So tonight as we gather, we will celebrate communion. We will celebrate all that Jesus is and we'll take him into all that we are and we will sing and we will pray. And we will celebrate just the same as those troops did Christmas Eve in 1945. What does it mean for Jesus to be the light of our world. An angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone. It's the light of God. Shone around them. They were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. When God gives a gift, he doesn't just give it to one, but he gives it to all. He offers himself freely to everyone. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Those verses, those words echo Isaiah chapter 9. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, 
mighty God, eternal Father, Prince of Peace. I invite each of you to bow your hearts and your heads in prayer and pray for the people that you know and love. Pray for the people you know that have needs and and have darkness and issues in their life right now. Just spend some moments praying for the light of Christ to enter into their lives at this moment. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, each of us thank you for giving to us yourself, for giving us the light that you are. Thank you for lighting us from the inside out with true life, which is from you. Thank you for giving us the incarnation, God with us. Emmanuel. Thank you for giving us hope and joy and love and peace. And Lord, for our friends and our family who at this moment have darkness in their lives, we ask you to fill them with your light. The world cannot extinguish you, Lord Jesus. And even though there is great darkness and great pain in this world, you are brighter, you are greater, you are stronger. So we ask your light and your love and your presence to fill each of the people we have just prayed for. Lord Jesus, as we now worship you and celebrate all that you are by taking communion, By faith, we declare to the world, not only were you born a baby and grew to be a man without sin, but you died on the cross shedding your blood and giving your body for us to forgive us all our sins and to redeem us from sin and death and the grave. Lord, as we take this bread and we take this cup, We declare to the world that you are coming again. And as we look forward now and we celebrate this Christmas Eve, we celebrate the miracle of the incarnation and your birth, Lord, we are also looking forward and anticipating your return, that you are coming back so that we may be with you where you are. And not only will we celebrate Christmas, we will celebrate the world's and all of creation's greatest wedding feast. Lord, this cup and this bread now are a foretaste of the gift you will give us in that feast. And we praise you and we thank you in your holy name. Amen. Would the issues come forward?